Recent military standoffs across the world have established one thing beyond doubt, that the future of aerial combat will bring together uncrewed aerial vehicles with those piloted by humans. We've already seen stuff like drone swarms and explosives being dropped by UAVs. Now, remember Top Gun? Just picture Maverick in his fighter jet, only that his wingman is a drone. That's the latest innovation unfolding in modern air combat. Many defense research and manufacturing firms are now working on something called a wingman drone. These are machines designed to fly in formation alongside fifth generation fighters like the F-35. What are these wingman drones? What role could they soon play in warfare? Where the research and development stands? And how companies such as Boeing, Lockheed Martin and Sukhoi are involved? Let's take a look. Earlier this week, American defense and aerospace manufacturer Lockheed Martin unveiled the Vectis. It said that this was a Group 5 survivable and lethal collaborative combat aircraft or CCA. That's a bit of a mouthful, right? What does it really mean? In simple terms, the Vectis is an autonomous combat aircraft or a military drone. But what's so different in this drone when compared to the many others already being used in aerial warfare? These wingman drones are being developed to fly alongside piloted fighter jets to help in missions. Traditionally, fighter pilots fly in pairs or groups. A wingman is a pilot who flies behind and outside the leader of a flying formation. The job of a wingman is to protect the lead pilot, provide extra eyes in the sky and, importantly, add more firepower to the formation. A wingman drone works on the same idea except that it's remotely piloted and autonomous to a certain extent. Wingman drones haven't yet been deployed anywhere in the world, but in principle, they can do the following. They can scout ahead using cameras and other sensors to detect threats before jets with human pilots get close to a target area. They also perform electronic warfare like jamming enemy radars or spoofing signals. They are being designed to carry heavy weapons to bolster the strike power. But most importantly, since human lives are not involved, these wingman drones can take high risks and fly right into danger zones. Now, Lockheed says that the Vectis is a Group 5 CCA. What is this grading all about? A Group 5 uncrewed aircraft system is the US military's way of classifying its largest and most capable drones. The military divides drones into five groups, from Group 1, which are small hand-launched drones, up to Group 5, which are the biggest and more powerful of these machines. Here's how a Group 5 UAS is classified. These are drones that weigh more than 600 kgs. They're closer in size to small airplanes than to hobby drones. Because of their size, they can carry heavy sensor equipment, communication gear, or missiles. They can fly higher than 18,000 feet, often reaching the same altitude as commercial aircraft. They're usually fast, sometimes jet-powered, and built for long-range missions. The MQ-9 Reaper, which is used widely by the US and its allies, is a Group 5 UAS. The RQ-4 Global Hawk is another example. Of course, these are not wingman drones. Now, let's talk about the specific details of the Vectis. Here's what it's planned for, according to Lockheed. It will perform surveillance tasks, electronic warfare, and carry weapons for air-to-air -air or air-to-ground attacks. It is designed to be survivable, basically harder for enemy defenses to shoot it down, and reusable so that it can fly many missions. Lockheed says it seamlessly integrates the fifth generation and next generation fighters. It will be capable of executing precision strikes and defensive counter air missions. It will have extended ranges compatible with Indo-Pacific, European, and Central Command theaters. And while it will have all these features, it will come at the price point of a drone. It also uses open system architecture, meaning its software and hardware can interface or upgrade more easily with other systems and without being logged into just one manufacturer. Lockheed says it aims to build a prototype and have Vectis fly within about two years. And if all goes well, production or deployment might follow after successful tests and it is being developed by Lockheed's Skunk Works team. 
Skunk Works is Lockheed Martin's famous advanced projects division known for secretly developing cutting edge aircraft like the U-2, SR-71 Blackbird and the F-117 stealth fighter. It's essentially the company's high-tech innovation lab for futuristic aerospace designs. Now, Lockheed is not the only one to be working on wingman drones. There hasn't been any deployment yet of this technology, but several countries are testing them. The US has projects like Boeing's MQ-28 Ghost Bat in partnership with Australia. Let's look at a few of them. And right at the end, I'll also talk about a drone the US military is testing to try and replace the centrality of hackable GPS systems in current air combat. Let's begin with the Boeing MQ-28 Ghost Bat. Developed in collaboration with the Royal Australian Air Force, this drone is Australia's first domestically produced combat aircraft in more than 50 years. It was named Ghost Bat after a native Australian mammal known for teaming together in a pack for a hunt. Designed to operate both autonomously and in conjunction with piloted aircraft, this wingman drone is capable of intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance activities as well as electronic warfare and direct combat. It has a payload capacity of up to 500 kgs and features an open architecture as well. In a recent trial, two of Boeing's Ghost Bats flew alongside an E-7A wedge tail surveillance aircraft with a human operator remotely controlling the uncrewed systems to carry out a mission against an airborne target. The Australian Defence Minister said that after the trial, that Ghost Bat has the potential to turn a single fighter jet into a fighting team with advanced sensors that are like hundreds of eyes in the sky. Next, the Kratos XQ-58 Valkyrie, which has been developed under the US Air Force's experimental program, is a stealthy high subsonic drone. One of the largest such planned drones, the Sukhoi S-70 Okhotnik B, also known as the Hunter B, has been in development since at least 2011. In 2023, Russia said that the state tests for the Okhotnik were almost complete and that it would begin production in the second half of 2024. However, there is no evidence that any such thing has happened so far. In April last year, the US Air Force also selected Anduril and General Atomics to develop the first fleet of wingman drones. California-based Anduril, which has already supplied small drones to Ukraine, has displayed a model of its 17-foot Fury drone planned for production in 2027 as part of the CCA program. General Atomics also recently displayed its YFQ-42A drone, which is its equivalent to the Fury, with both designed for potential use in the Pacific. European defense firms are also advancing wingman drone initiatives, including Sweden's Saab, and a partnership between Dassault, Airbus, and Indra Systemas. Turkey's Baikar has also displayed two of its drone models for the first time, the high-altitude heavy-lift Akinci and the TB3, which has foldable wings and can take off or land on short runway aircraft carriers. Importantly, China has also showcased concept systems like the FH-97 series. The Feihong FH-97 and subsequent FH-97A are being developed by a subsidiary of the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation. Unveiled in 2021, the FH-97 is a stealthy unmanned aerial vehicle designed to suppress air defenses with electronic countermeasures. Although China has shown off its prototypes, analysts suggest it may be still some years before these systems are integrated into China's military arsenal. While these are some of the popular wingman drones under development, there are also initial and unconfirmed reports of other such bleeding-edge tech being worked on. Now, as promised earlier in the video, I'll now talk about another interesting drone research project of the US military. In August this year, a bright orange dart drifted in the air at approximately 1,000 feet in the US skies. And what was the goal of this flight? It was to examine the feasibility of providing an aircraft or weapon with its own internal GPS tools instead of using external sources. Because as we all know, external sources are prone to jamming and spoofing and can deny an aircraft the ability to maneuver in combat. MK3 takes off via a controller. Once airborne, the aircraft's autonomy takes over and then relies on the alternative navigation software for location and flight guidance. 
UAS flight controllers monitor the flight with multiple cameras and data gathering equipment to ensure the systems communicate properly and safety is maintained. What we are seeing here, whether it's small drones like the Osprey MK3 or big projects like Lockheed Vectis, is that air forces are preparing for a future where autonomy is at the core of air combat. From avoiding GPS jamming to flying as a loyal wingman alongside an F-35, these experiments are shaping how wars will be fought in the skies of tomorrow.